entrepreneur. Welcome to your Entrepreneur Resources Show. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Venice, your host, and here at Your Entrepreneur Resources, we discover the no fluff action steps to help you avoid all the overwhelm and BS out there, connecting you with the right mentors, resources, and tools, helping you every step of the way on your entrepreneurial journey. We go live here twice a week, interviewing different entrepreneurs and experts on all areas of business. So make sure to join our Facebook group and look out for the events inside your Entrepreneur Resources page. You can find all the links in the description box. Today, I have a very special guest with me. It's Kareen Hoon from Hone Your Social. Kareen Hoon is the founder of Hone Your Social, a social media management and coaching business. Hone Your Social was born in March of 2019, and since then, Kareen has sold out her full service social media management packages and has moved into business coaching for creatives. Kareen is going to let us in on how to use Instagram to attract, nurture, and sell to your dream clients. Without further ado, let's dive right into this week's interview. Thank you for joining me, and I'm so excited to have you here with me. Do you want to tell us more about your business and your journey first? Yeah, fun. I will, definitely. I want to preface this by saying I apologize if my dog barks or my cat <laughs> meows while we do this presentation, but they're in the house with me. I actually um, have pigeons flying around uh, like my balcony at the moment, so I'm like, please don't make any noise. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. I guess that's what we all have come to get used to while working from home more and more so um but yeah about my business so my business is hone your social it's a social media management and instagram coaching business um my coaching side of things focuses on supporting service-based entrepreneurs and other coaches to use instagram to attract nurture and sell to their dream clients so they can scale and i absolutely love what I do because I get to connect with amazing action-taking entrepreneurs every single day. Um, I think it's a real collaborative experience and I really, really love it. That's amazing. What makes you decide to start your entrepreneurial journey? Because I feel like a lot of times people might have been working in a corporate job and decide, decided to switch or they want more freedom, they want more financial freedom. What, what's the main reason that you decided to switch and turn into yeah. your, your own boss? <laughs> Yeah, so um, I come from the nonprofit world. I worked in the nonprofit um, world in Guatemala for four years before um, I moved to the US. So I'm from Ireland originally, but I live in the US now. That's where my husband is from. And when I moved here, I had to go through the green card application process. I wasn't al allowed to work. Um, and I just got really bored at home. And I was looking for different opportunities and fun things to do to kind of fill my days while I waited for my work permit to come in. And I started an Instagram account um, for multiple reasons. One, to try and meet new people because I knew nobody in Salt Lake City where we were based. Um, and two, because I love food. So I started a foodie Instagram account and started posting about all the different places I was going to eat. And that allowed me to connect with different business owners and restaurant owners in Salt Lake City. And they were all saying how great it was to see their food posted on social media and that they needed social media help. So I thought, okay, maybe this is a business idea. Um, I had never really heard about social media management. I had no professional marketing training. So I had to kind of start from scratch. So I totally fell into this world took some different online courses. And then when my work permit came through, I was able to set up my business um, and start working as a social media manager. And then when COVID hit, a lot of those um, restaurants and other clients were like, okay, this is scary times. We're gonna put a pause on our social media management right now. It's not our main focus. So then of course I understood, but I was scared because I thought, oh crap, this is my business you know, and, and now people can't afford to pay me. So what am I going to do? So I thought, okay, what do people need now? And how can I show up and serve them? So I moved more into the coaching space because I could teach people how to use social media for themselves. So they didn't have to outsource it anymore. They could learn the skills they needed to um, do social media for their own businesses. So that's kind of where the coaching side of things came about. Yeah, that's amazing. Do you, do you think that you mainly focus on Instagram at the moment or is there like like a balance between you do like Facebook and Instagram and also other social media platforms? 
Yeah, for my social media clients, it's a whole range from, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever they need. But my favorite platform to use is Instagram. So I focus mostly on Instagram when it comes to coaching. Yeah, that's so cool. What do you think is the main reason that you focus on Instagram? Because I know that a lot of people are thinking that Instagram is so saturated and there are just mm -hmm. so many people on there already. Like, how do you even stand out? Like, what's that main reason that you decided to focus on Instagram? Yeah, it's a great question. So the reason I love it is because there's so many different features and that means there's so many different ways for you to connect with your dream client. Mm -hmm. So by features, I mean, um, like you can post in the feed, you can post to your stories, you can create reels now, um, you can go live just like we're doing. You can do an Instagram TV series. Now there's guides. There's so many different ways to use Instagram. Um, so you can pick and choose the features that work best for you and the features you think your audience most enjoys and stand out from the crowd that way. So some people now love using reels. Other people focus on stories. It's not all about posting in the feed anymore. Mm, I love that. What, speaking of guides, I'm actually very curious. Have you tried it out before? Like, have you used it yet? No, I have not used it yet. No, I am. Um, I'm in the middle of a big launch, which I know we're going to talk about. So that's been taking up all my time. So I have not got to try guides yet. Mm. But I'm really excited I, to try it. Yeah, it's kind of like a vlog, right? Um, yeah. Not yeah. Really sure what it is really. <laughs> yeah, as far as I understand, it's like longer form content that you can share and like have commentary on. But I need to like dig deep into it and see if it would be oh, useful yeah. for me to use. Yeah, definitely. And for Instagram Reels as well, I know it's kind of like the big thing. It's, you know, everyone's on Reels these days. Do you think that's something that people should incorporate into their Instagram strategy? So I'm a big believer in only doing what you enjoy when it comes mm -hmm. to marketing. Um, if you can outsource in other ways, then that's fantastic. But if you're taking charge of your Instagram account, you should only do what you like to do. So I tried Reels. And I would suggest everyone to try them to see if it's something that you like. I did not like making reels. Oh, I, it took me way too long. It was taking me like an hour to make a 15 second video. And I thought this is just not a good use of my time. But other people are much faster at it. They're much more creative at it and they can have really good experience. So everyone's unique in that aspect. So I think try it. And if you like it, keep it up. If you don't, then that's totally fine. I think that's such a strong message because nowadays everybody says you know go on tiktok go on clubhouse go on instagram but then yeah. if you don't like it you're gonna hate like your work and that's not the whole point about being an entrepreneur right you don't yes. want to be hating like going waking up in the morning being like oh i have to make that real video and i don't want to make I instagram know. Video. <laughs> so i know that's the worst feeling yeah. and it's not sustainable for you then you'll just give up uh, yeah so what do you think is the main focus for you then in terms of do you think you should focus on posts or story or even IGTV? Yeah, I'd say if you if you don't know which features would work best, test them out, test them all out. I would recommend definitely posting your feed consistently. So maybe two, three times a week. I would also suggest posting to stories every single day. I love Instagram stories because it allows you to give like a richer experience of your brand and your message and just you personally to your audience, which I think is only a good thing. And then the other feature I recommend everyone to use is the link in your bio. I think that can be overlooked sometimes, but make sure you have a working li link and that you have a strong call to action in your bio so that your audience knows exactly what you want them to do when you click that link. I think that's really important. Do you think that, you know, a lot of people use Linktree. Do you think mm -hmm. that you should do, like, use a platform like Linktree, or would you recommend using a single link going to one landing page? I think it depends on where you're at in your business um, and what you're trying to achieve at that moment. I would say switch up your link in your bio as, um, quite, quite often. So most recently, uh, I think in the last two months, I've changed the link in my bio three times. So one, I wanted to bring more people to into my freebie and into my email list. So I was promoting my free resource in the link in my bio. And then at the start of this month, I was hosting a free masterclass. So then I wanted people to sign up for the masterclass. And now I'm promoting um, like this launch that I'm going through. So now there's a link to that page, like a sales page with more information. So I think it's totally okay to switch it up often. It also keeps your bio interesting because it changes on a regular basis. Link trees are good in a sense that you can link lots of different pages, but it can be confusing to 
somebody new to your page if they click on a link tree and there's like 10 different options for them to go and explore they might end up not exploring anything so i would say be as direct as possible yeah yeah i yeah sometimes i go into people's link and bio and then i like just open that page up and i see 20 options and i'm like no i have no clue which one to click on yeah. and i'm just gonna go back out now <laughs> yeah so i pull it on this the dog scared me <laughs> another tip i was going to say about the link in your bio is that if you don't have a website like me i've been in business almost two years and i still don't have a website because it f takes me too long to make one on my own and i didn't have the money to invest up until this point this is the goal i have for 2021 i would love to get my website up and running but when you're starting out money can be tight um, and time can be tight as well. So if you don't have a website, um, a really cool app I used was the Milkshake app. Um, and you can make a branded Insta website for free. So it's like a landing page um, and you can use your brand colors and kind of just give like an about section um, on who you are and kind of speak directly to your target audience um, in a little bit more detail on there. Um, and it also has, includes clickable links. Um, okay. So I think it's like a a better version of Linktree. Mm -hmm. So inside you can like add the link to your program and like your yeah. freebie. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. milkshake, right? Milkshake, yeah. And it's all okay. done for free just from your phone. It's really, really easy to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Definitely put it inside the description so other people can check it out. As well. Do. It's useful. Yeah. Cool. And do you have any other tips regarding to Instagram growing and attracting your um, target audience and your ideal audience into your business? Yes, definitely. So I call it the um, three S's. So you want to show up, serve, and then sell. Um, so by showing up, it means that you're consistently making use of all those Instagram features that we already touched on, mm -hmm. um, that you have a strategy in place and you're able to um, replicate that strategy week after week on a consistent basis. So you're always showing up and you're just giving people an opportunity to find you and connect with you. So that's like the first step. And then um, the second step is to serve them. So as your audience grows, you want to be able to serve and nurture them. Um, and I like to put out content that's educational, inspiring and empowering. That's kind of my main focus. Um, and really, what you need to know here is who your target audience is. That's so, so, so crucial. So think about what their needs are, what are their desires, um, like what keeps them up at night, what makes them tick. Think of all these different aspects that make up your target audience and then start to create content that speaks to that. Um, if you don't know who your target audience is, I think that you should do some market research. So whether that's, um, you know, emailing friends and family that are business owners or that are within an area of business that you would like to work with um, or polling people on your Instagram stories or sending out um, like a Google form with some, you know, brief questions in Facebook groups or just kind of trying to figure out who exactly it is that you're targeting is so, so important because it enables you to create content that speaks directly to them and that stands out from the rest of the crowd on Instagram because Instagram like you said is quite saturated so you want to have a really clear target when you're using the platform um, and then yeah you can create content that really does serve yeah and then when it comes oh, go go the, sorry before going to the third point about serving do you think because there's so many types of content you can create on Instagram like you said before do you think you know like nowadays it's so popular for people to post quotes or like infographics rather than, you know, the aesthetic pleasing photos, what do you think is the best way? Or do you think, for example, like a combination would be best? Yeah, so if you look at my Instagram page, you'll see that I have a pattern. I love patterns. I think it makes things look pretty, which right. is important on Instagram. It is a visual platform, you know, but it's not the be all and end all anymore. Um, I think, so the way I do it is I have like a picture of me and then like a, a graphic that I've made in Canva with my branded colors. So I would recommend using your brand colors consistently whenever you post um, on any mar marketing platform. Um, so that helps develop brand awareness and trust. Um, and I would recommend showing your face. I mean, when I started doing this, I felt so awkward because I had to like take selfies every day and 
you know, it just felt silly. But when you were able to show up and show your face and use your own voice on the platform, you're so, it's so much easier to connect with people. Um, at the end of the day, people buy from people and they want to feel a connection to you if they're going to invest their hard earned money in what you have to offer. So I would definitely try to show your face as much as possible. And then on the other posts, yeah, I think it's totally okay to post um, like infographics and how to's and quotes and things like that, because those are shareable content. It's much easier for somebody to share one of those um, posts to their stories or to send it to someone else um, than they would share your face, you know? So I think having a good mix is a good balance. What do you think, because I know that some brands and some people in that audience are more product-based businesses or service-based businesses, and they might not want to be, you know, like putting their face in the image or in the photo that they post. What do you think they should do instead? Like, um, is there another type of post that they can focus on? Yeah, if you don't want to be the face of your brand, um, I think it's really important to have a really clear brand voice in that um, instance. So, you know, is your brand voice playful or more serious or is it funny do you crack jokes all the time I think if you're not having a strong face or like a person behind the brand having your voice really developed is really important because you can still form a connection with people if you have a consistent brand voice across all of your messaging mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, yeah. Good. let's move on to the third step then okay the third step is all about selling um and the biggest light bulb moment for me when it comes to selling your services or your products is to focus not so much on what, on the specifics of what you're offering, but the transformation that you're offering somebody. So um, people pay for results. They want to know that what they're buying or what they're investing in is going to get them something that they need or want. And they want results, you know, they want something to be easier for them or better for them or, um, whatever it is, we pay for results. So when you're selling, try to focus on um, like sharing testimonials from clients, sharing social proof. So um, any feedback you've gotten or any messages, screenshots of messages from past clients or customers saying how, you know, wonderful this was and why. Um, kind of trying to tell a bigger story around what you're offering. Um, so it is important to, you know, so say you're a social media manager, it is important to say, okay, with this package, you're getting 15 Instagram posts, um, a month and you'll get one monthly report or whatever it is. But it's also important to talk about the results you're going to get that person. Um, so, you know, yeah, you're going to be saving them time. You're going to be giving them peace of mind. Um, you're going to help them increase their brand awareness and hopefully help them increase their sales. So the more you can focus on the bigger picture and the results, the easier it is to sell to somebody. Yeah, I think a lot of the time people are very scared to sell on Instagram, right? I feel like they're like, oh yeah, like I'm going to give a, as much value as possible, which is super important, but it can be a bit scary to be like, hi, um, here's my sales page, please check it out. What do you think is like your top tip or tips to help people get through that mindset block. Yeah, it definitely is a big mindset hurdle. So I would say, basically, if you are not showing up and talking to people about how you can serve and help them, they're never going to know that you have the support that they need. And then they're still going to need it. And they're going to be stressed out or worried or um, like discouraged. It is kind of up to us to put ourselves out there and get out of our comfort zones show up and tell people that we have the solutions to their problems mm -hmm. so it is scary but when you come at it from a point of service i think it makes it a little bit easier and i would also try to build in sales messaging into your content on a consistent basis so that it becomes easier for you to talk about it and people um, become aware of what you have to offer and then are much more likely to want to learn more or want to buy from you in the future. But it is a long-term process. It's not like you're going to do one post about, you know, your services and then like 10 people are going to buy from you. I wish it was that easy, but it's not. <laughs> you have to build it in over time um, and work it into your messaging bit by bit. Yeah. When you say work it into your messaging, do you mean, for example, when you make a post, like mention the kind of program you have or the clients you have? Yeah, so it can be across all the different Instagram features. 
Um, I definitely would say post about it um, and then have a really strong call to action. Like check out the link in my bio to learn more or apply the link in my bio now. Like have a strong call to action in your posts. But then also in your stories, um, if you're using Instagram stories, I would share screenshots of results from people, share testimonials. So that way you're selling through the results. And then also don't be afraid to jump on and talk directly to the camera and say, oh, this is what I'm working on right now. Um, or like tease people about a launch that you have coming up. Like you can build it in bit by bit. So then people, it doesn't hit people out of the blue when you have a special offer. So if you can tease it beforehand in like two weeks before you have a bigger offer or a launch happening, they've become used to hearing about it and they might be excited to learn more. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, think of it as a long term process and don't be afraid to bring it in here and there. Speaking of launch, I know that you have been posting a little bit here and there about your launch. Mm -hmm. and you finally launched yesterday, right? Um, yes. yes. Tell us the more about your program and everything. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. So I just launched my first ever online course, the six week self study program, and it's called the Instagram Money Making Blueprint. So it kind of goes in to detail, like dives deep into what we've been discussing today. So it's all about how to use Instagram in a holistic way with your business to attract, nurture and sell to your dream clients. And it covers three different modules. So the first module is all about confidence. It's about laying the foundations for your future success and working on mindset and goal setting and your motivating factors and just making sure everything's in place so that you can build a successful and sustainable business from the ground up and then module two is all about clarity so gaining clarity on who your target audience is what your messaging is your brand voice your content pillars your instagram strategy all that good stuff very very strategic and then the third module is all about clients so it's all about how to sell the psychology of selling and then also how to make it easy for people to work with you by building a seamless onboarding sequence um, and just making sure everything is in place so that your clients have a fantastic experience with you. So it's for service-based entrepreneurs and coaches. So, you know, whether you're a wellness coach or a fitness coach or a social media manager or a photographer, there's so much good stuff in there for you. So at the link in my bio, there is a link um, to uh, a page with more information and I'd love you guys to go check it out. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. I, I think I have to go check it out myself. <laughs> <laughs> Do. Yeah. Um, just one final question before we wrap this up. Um, if you were to start your entire Instagram profile from zero today, from scratch, what do you think you'd focus on the most like right away? Oh my goodness. What a good question. Um, I would focus on niching down. And I know it's scary when you start out to think, oh gosh, if I niche down and if I only focus on one specific part of the market, then that's so many other people I'm not going to be speaking to and so many other people that I won't be able to serve. But when you are able to niche down and have a very small target audience and create content just for them, you stand out so much easier on Instagram. Um, so what I mean by that is imagine you are a copywriter and for one of my past clients decided to niche down into the eco and sustainable friendly business niche it's quite small you know yeah. um so that was her decision to niche, niche down into that um target audience and she was scared because she thought well you know now like restaurant owners won't won't like work with me or whatever it is and while that was a real fear, what she learned was that as soon as she niched down and as soon as she started putting out content that was specific to her target audience, she became the authority in copywriting on Instagram for that niche. So that meant that people who are business owners in the sustainability industry knew that she was the person to go to and answer their questions. They were much more likely to reach out and ask her a question than they would a copywriter who focused on restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, and she was able to sign oh gosh, like multiple clients in our 12 months together. And she was able to um, completely leave her old life behind and move to a different country and live the laptop lifestyle. And That's it just amazing. completely <laughs> changed her lifestyle. And it was all through the power of niching. So I think that is what I would want every small business owner or every person just starting out to think about is really know your target audience. Mm -hmm. 
and don't be afraid to put out content just for them. That's amazing. I think that's such a great advice, especially even if you're not starting out from scratch. A lot of people might have, you know, like not that many followers. And although followers are not the only number, like it's not the only number that matters, but it's good to know that, you know, like that one tip, like honing in, honing in on your specific niche and knowing who you're serving. I think that's such a powerful message. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, I hope that people learn something from this. Um, yes. Yeah, and if anyone has any questions afterwards or wants more detail, just send me a message. I'm happy to help. Yeah, where can people find out more about you besides on Instagram? Well, Instagram is my main point of call. I love it. Um, but I also have a Facebook, a Facebook group called the Empowered Entrepreneur Collective. Um, and it's a really great community of um, fellow entrepreneurs and we support each other. Um, so if you would like to join us, we'd love to have you. I'll put everything in the description box. So make sure to check those out. And thank you again so much. We go live here every single week, twice a week, actually. So make sure to tune in. And thank you so much. And I'll wrap this up. Um, again, good luck on your launch. And I will speak to you soon. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. You too. Bye. Bye. There you have it. Hope you got a ton of value because I certainly did. Corrine has a very special free gift for you, her free Instagram engagement boosting workbook with engagement boosting tips that you can start using right away. I also have the free entrepreneur resource library for you. It has the no tech confusion resource library, 40 plus eBooks, cheat sheets, mini courses, and a lot more. So make sure to check it out in the description box. We have our live interviews twice a week. So make sure to stay tuned. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next one.